This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Ho there. It's Jeff Cardano. Welcome you to another Sports Catastrophe on this day. I know it's been a couple days since I've done one of these, like new, as new, but anyway, it's huge. This on this day happened just last year, 2022. It, December 18th, 2022. The World Cup final happened between Argentina and France. Everyone expected a fantastic final, but a lot of people didn't expect how great the final really was. Anyway, so the 2022 World Cup was controversial because in 2010, when they awarded both the 2018 and 2022 World Cups to different countries, both countries did it under awful circumstances. 2018 went to Russia, which was like, why? And 2022 went to Qatar, which was even worse because Qatar's human rights records, their policies towards women, a lot of crap. So Qatar still held the World Cup and 32 teams qualified in it. In Group A, Holland and Senegal were the top teams as Ecuador and Qatar. The host Qatarians crashed out 0-3, scoring one puny goal against Senegal. They couldn't even do well against Ecuador. Qatar crashed out 0-3. They actually were the first World Cup host to not even get a single solidarity point. South Africa even in 2010, the other host nation that did not make it to the knockout stages in history. They had a win. Well, they had a point, even. Qatar really crashed out. Group B saw England and the U.S. win as per usual, with Iran and Wales falling behind. Wales only getting a solidary tie against those Americanos. Group C saw Argentina, one of the protagonists in the World Cup final, go 2-1, and one, shockingly losing to Saudi Arabia 2-1, to one, and people thought Argentina were overrated, and Saudi Arabia, wow, that was huge. Unfortunately for Saudi Arabia, they couldn't beat Poland or Mexico, and Argentina rallied to beat Poland and Mexico themselves. Poland beat Mexico on goal differential, thus ruining Mexico's chances of making it to the knockout stages. But I did not know this. The last time Mexico was in a World Cup and did not make the knockout stages was 1978. For all the times Mexico has been to the World Cup through CONCACAF, they had qualified for the knockout stages every time. I had no clue. Group D saw France and Australia, well, France, the other protagonist, get in with a 2 and one mark. France shockingly losing the Austro uh, to Tunisia 1-0. It was huge. Losing to Tunisia. It didn't matter. Tunisia did not qualify alongside Denmark, as France and Australia, both were 2-1, and one, made it. Group E saw Japan and Spain move on at the expense of Germany and Costa Rica. I was thinking Germany would get in, because, you know, part of my allegiance went to Germany, but losing to Japan 2-1 in the first game sunk them. And goal differential was huge. Well, Spain had a much bigger goal differential than Germany because they crushed Costa Rica in the fine powder 7-0. Costa Rica shocked Japan 1-0. Days after losing 7-0 to Spain. Group F was the group of death, as they called it. As it was now called. We had Morocco, Croatia, Belgium, and my home and native land, Canada. Canada tried. They did score two goals. But they did not get a single point, thus making them, like Honduras, 0-6 in World Cup play without a point. Morocco and Croatia did qualify, and as Belgium again underachieved in a World Cup and in a major tournament. People were shocked that Morocco would get in ahead of Belgium. They did. Gucci saw Brazil and Switzerland both go 2-1 and one and qualify. Cameroon and Serbia were knocked out. And Group H saw Portugal and South Korea do it. As Uruguay and Ghana were out. Uruguay got knocked out on goal differential. No, they didn't. Both Korea and Uruguay had scored the same, well, scored, scored and allowed the same amount of goals. As in, they, they scored as much as I let in. But Korea scored four goals, whereas Uruguay only scored twice, so that's why Korea got into the tournament. So the round of 16 happened. The Dutch beat the U.S. 3-1. to one. Argentina almost bottled it to Australia, but they won 2-1. to one. France took care of Poland 3-1 thanks to a pair of goals by Mbappe. 
England crushed Senegal 3-0. Japan and Croatia went to penalties, which Croatia won. Brazil beat Korea 4-1. Morocco shocked everyone by taking down Spain in penalties. It was 0-0 headed to penalties. Morocco got three out of their four penalties. Spain missed all three penalties. Portugal crushed Switzerland in the fine powder 6-1. Quarterfinals happened. Brazil and Croatia went to, went to penalties, 1-1 one, one tie. As Croatia scored with three minutes left in extra time to force the penalty shootout, and Croatia shocked everyone by scoring all four goals, all four of their penalty shots. So Croatia sends Brazil out of the tournament. Holland and Argentina, who were great rivals and all that, went to penalties. And thanks to a very late goal, well, Argentina was up 2 nothing, And then the Dutch scored two late goals by Weikhorst. They went to extra time. The Dutch missed their first two penalties and almost had it, but Argentina won 4-3 on penalties. They knocked out the Dutch. Morocco shot Portugal 1-0. I thought Portugal for sure was going to win the quarterfinal. And then much later, England faced France. I remember that game. I'm like, we're going to lose to France. I just know it. And we did. 2-1. England had a couple of chances, but they flubbed it. And Giroud with the winning goal in the 78th minute. France won 2-1. In the semis, Argentina and France had easy times. Argentina took care of Croatia 3-0 thanks to a pair of Alvarez goals. Julian Alvarez. And France won 2-0 thanks to Teo Hernandez and Colomuari. For Morocco. But the funny thing was that Morocco actually, when they gave up the goal to France, that was the first goal they gave up since Canada. So Canada, for the longest time, actually had the last goal against Morocco in regulation. In the third place playoff, Croatia won 2 1 as Grebidol and Orsic scored. Croatia took second place last tournament, they took third this tournament, so back to back podiums. But the 22 World Cup final. This is what it is at Lucille Stadium in Lucille, Qatar. It was on Qatari National Day. 1.5 billion people were watching on TV. And this was huge. France were the defending champions. Argentina were trying to win one for Leo Messi and uh, give Messi that one piece of hardware that he could claim over Cristiano Ronaldo. A World Cup trophy. So Anyway, it was huge for them. Argentina and France both had one loss in the um, thing, but it didn't hurt anything. Anyway, Polish referee Simon Marciak was named referee of the final and the two Polish assistants. So this was huge for Polska. Um, anyway, Marciak actually officiated one of France's games, well, against Denmark in the group stage, and the Argentina-Australia match in the round of 16. Anyway, it was just huge and all that. The match and all that. Argentina was given a penalty in the 23rd minute when Di Maria was fouled in the penalty area. Leo Messi took the penalty and scored into the right corner 1-0. And then a big Argentina counterattack happened and Angel de Maria scored to make it 2-0. What a pass. France had to make a couple substitutions and it was 2-0 Argentina at the half. Argentina looked pretty good. But in the 80th minute after Odomendi fouled Colo Muay in the area, Mbappe came in. He's a good penalty kicker, and he scored to the left side, 2-1. And then a counterattack happened as Mbappe followed a great pass from Marcus Turum to him, and Mbappe followed it and made it 2-2. It was close to being saved again, but it failed. And then five minutes later, France thought they had a penalty, but Turam was booked for diving. So it was 2-2, headed to extra time. And then in the 108th minute, Messi, proving his genius, scored a key goal to make it 3-2 Argentina. 
and it looked like Argentina was going to win this World Cup. However, after a Mbappe shot hit the arm of Gonzalo Montiel, which is illegal in soccer, France was given another penalty. Mbappe came up to the spot and kicked the goal, making him the second player ever to get a hat trick in a World Cup final after the great Jeff Hurst did it in 1966. So, anyway. One of the best saves in World Cup Finals history happened with not much time to spare. Kolo Murari had a chance to score, but somehow Emmanuel, Emilio Martinez, the goalie for Argentina, somehow got the ball with the shin. And if it wasn't for that save, France would have won the World Cup. So, it was time for the penalty shootout. Messi went first and scored for Argentina. Then Mbappe for France scored. Dybala scored for Argentina. Before Kingsley Coleman came in and he missed his shot. Parade scored for Argentina 3-1. Shootout. Chulomani missed his shot, making it that. Oh, I think I screwed up on the... No, France went first, sorry. And then Kulomiani scored to make it 3-2. But with one kicker left, if Montiel's, if Fernando Montiel scored, Argentina would win the World Cup because France could only score one goal on their last attempt and make it 4-3. So Montiel came up and booted it. And, you know, he was the guy who had the unfortunate handball that saw France tie it up in extra time. But he redeemed himself a gigantic goal. And the Argentines won the game 4-2 on penalties, making the World Cup chance for the first time since 1986 in the hand of God. And of course, that was big because, you know, Maradona had died earlier in the year. So Argentina, they're, they made all their substitutions. Like, Marcos Acuna came in for Anel de Maria, Gonzalo Montiel came in for Nathaniel Molina. Leonardo Paredes came in for Rodrigo de Paul. Leonardo Martinez came in for Julian Alvarez. Germán Pasella came in for Al Alexis McAllister, which is weird. He's not an Argentine name. And Paulo Dybala came in for Nicolas Tiafico. I bet you Dybala was the fifth penalty. Well, he went for the penalty ship. France, their substitutions, Randall Kolo Mioli in the 41st minute for Osome Dembele, Marcus Turm in the 41st minute for Olivier Giroud, which was shocking. Kingsley Coleman came in for Teo Hernandez. Eduardo Carabinga came in for Antoine Griezmann. Yusuf Fofana came in for Adrian Rabio. Ibrahim Kanade came in for Rafael Ferrari. And Axel de Sassi came in for Jules Karunde. The non substituted players Argentina, Emmanuel Martinez, their goalie, Cristiano Ronaldo, Christian Ro Romero, Nicolas Ota Otamandi, Enzo Fernandez, and Leo Messi were not substituted for. It. They were the starters. And France's four starters that were not substituted for Hugo Lloris in net, Deo Upa Meccano. At defender Uriel Churomini and Kieran Mbappe. So it was just huge and all that. Well, they had a concussion, they actually had a concussion substitution and all that, but the legacy was just huge and all that. Pundits, commentators, and audience, it's, it's the intensity, stressful atmosphere, and back and forth nature, and all that, because Messi and Mbappe were actually teammates for Paris Saint Germain, which made it huge. They said it was one of the greatest World Cup finals and matches ever. Argentina's third World Cup title, they had won it previously in 1978 and 86, puts them fourth on the list of World Cup nations. Brazil has five, Italy and Germany both have four, and now Argentina has three. They're now fourth. Becoming the first South American slash North non-European side to win the World Cup since Brazil 20 years previous. So anyway, it was huge and all that. 
So it was just humongous at that. The World Cup came to Argentina and they won the World Cup. One of the best finals ever. Fight me on it. Anyhow, I'm Jeff Diamond Adu. 